In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, as our Lord was going to the village, to the villages of Caesarea of Philippi, he is starting, starting an unusual discussion with his disciples. Before this, he never touched this subject. He will, he, somehow, always he was avoiding to talk about this. But now pay attention, as God, he knew beforehand what people thinks about him. Why he is asking his disciples what people are saying about me. Who am I? And look at the answer. They said, some are saying that you are John the Baptist. Others are saying Elijah. And others, one of the prophets. But they did not tell him that others were saying about him that he is working with the demons, right? And many other bad things. Others were saying that he is Messiah, but they did not say these things. They just mentioned few things, somehow positive. See, they didn't want to bring the, ne the negativity on the surface. Let it be, and let them be, right? But in our days, like, if I would ask the people, what others are saying about me. Ooh, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is a lot of stuff that the people are talking about, right? Or in your workplace, you would ask your closest friends, what others are saying about me? If they are really true friends, they would tell you probably, they will be honest. But that's exactly the point. Why do you think Jesus did not ask them before? Because they weren't ready. Even though they were seeing him performing all these miracles, but they, they weren't yet attached to him. But now that the time is getting closer to his sacrifice, he saw that they are somehow prepared and he's opening to them more about the kingdom of heaven and the things that had to come, right? If he would address to them this question in the beginning, it would be probably unsuccessful. But now, after they answered, he is addressing to them the direct question. What do you think about me? What do you, you personally are saying about me? And Peter, as the oldest out of all of them, said, you are the Christ. See Christos, which means you are the one that are anointed, the one that is promised. Right? So because we know in the Old Testament, all the kings and prophets, they were anointed with olive oil by uh, the direction of God directly. This is my chosen one, anoint him, right? This happened with David and other kings. And all the prophets were anointed. 
So, Christos means the one that is anointed. That's what Christ means. So, the promised one. In their, in their ideology, in their understanding, that was the one that has to become the king of Israel, to take the throne of David and to lead the people of Israel to conquer the Romans and other people and become the strongest kingdom on earth. That was their understanding, their perception, their vision. So that's why they, they said in, the, in their answer, they did not think about the sacrifice that he would offer for our redemption, for our salvation. But for them was the earthly kingdom. That's why we will see in tomorrow's gospel two of them approaching and asking him to put one on his right and one on his left. Because that was, that was their thinking. That he will become the king and they will start conquering all the neighbors and become the rulers of the world. So that was their understanding, their perception. Which was completely wrong. And that's why he is trying to see their vision. What they are thinking. So somehow he is touching the subject, but they are not there yet. And that's why he is charging them, saying, do not tell to anyone about it. Right? Because first of all, his own disciples weren't ready for what was the real purpose of his coming, of his incarnation. So if his closest ones weren't ready for this, right, then what you, could you expect from others, right? And this is happening, unfortunately, in our own families. Many times there is a division between the same family, husband and wife, right? They have different opinion, they have different vision. One is maybe more inclined towards salvation. The other one is more inclined towards earthly living. So, and there is a division. And of course, in those cases, uh, the raising of the ch the, their children is very difficult because they are not on the same way. And the kids are troubled because daddy is saying one thing, mom is saying an another thing, and they are like disoriented. What's going on? They can't figure out what to do, and they are screaming at us, right? So there is this balance in the family, in the same family, because of that, that reason. So that's why, first of all, we have to bring a balance among us. Either is that in our family, either is that in our work, workplace, and even in the church, because it's a huge spiritual disbalance in our days now. And this was going forever, from the beginning, beginning. Remember of the first era of Christianity. Some people were following Peter, some other people were following Paul. Oh, we belong to Peter, we belong to Paul. They're, they were divided. See? It's not only now. It was. After them was others, like we mentioned, Arius, Nestorius, and so many others, right? And unfortunately, uh, we have those individuals in our day, in our church as well. Uh, but as our ancestors, they were fighters. They fight it for the truth. Now it's our turn. 
now it's, it's on us, on our shoulders. We have to take upon our shoulders our cross and to follow him as he asked us to do so and to stand up for the same truth, which is God himself. So we cannot say, oh, you know, it is what it is. It's happening. We can't do anything. Well, if we do so, then we becoming like Judas, the Iscariot, betrayers. We have to stand up. Because on this depends our salvation. If we are not ready to take it and to stand up for it, then we are not ready, as we are seeing in the gospel. They were looking for earthly kingdom. They weren't ready yet. So this is the message of today's gospel, to see where we are exactly are. And this is the question. What do you personally think about Christ? Each one of you, each one of you, what do you think about him and his sacrifice? Why he came? Why he gave up his body for us and for our salvation? And if we would understand this and we will find the answer to his divine sacrifice, then we will change the way of our thinking, the approach to our own life. We will see it differently. But as far as we cannot understand the simple things, we cannot look for big answers. Because if you don't know the alphabet, which is basic, you're not going to be able to read books and to understand higher levels. So you have to go from the lowest stage to start to grow up. Because otherwise, it's not, it's not going to happen. No, nobody was born that way to know everything except God himself, right? Because he is the creator of all. We have to earn everything through hard way sometimes and mostly of the times because if we desire a simple and easy life then we did not accept Christ in our life and his cross in our life without cross there is no sacrifice and there is no resurrection so many of our Christians today they are rejecting the cross from their lives because we want a, an easy life, but without cross, there is no, as I said, there is no resurrection. So there is, there is no salvation without cross. We have to understand it. That's why he said, whoever wants to follow me, let him take his cross. Because that's the only way, by taking our cross and following him. If you say that, oh, I believe in God, and yeah, but you don't accept the cross, then you're not on the right place. So, yes, we are going through difficulties, temptations, pain in our life. But this is what he, he did. He, from his birth, was persecuted. As soon as he was born, he was persecuted. He had to flee in Egypt. So his entire life on earth, not only when he was grown up, but from the beginning of beginning, he was persecuted. But for us, it's so difficult to accept this in our life because we, we are not ready as the disciples. Were. We have different desires, and especially in this modern era, we want luxury. We want an easy life. We want money. We don't want pain and suffer. But we call ourselves Christians. But we know 
that after night, the sun rises, right? We know after crucifixion is the resurrection. And this is how we as Christians are focusing on this life. We know that after pain, Christ is giving us his grace. And through his grace, elevates us, raises us from our bed of our passion, from the bed of our destruction. So let us focus, my dear ones, on this, on his cross. Because remember, in the wilderness, all the Jewish that were bitten by the snake, as they were looking up to the cross, they were saved. So we are bitten by the demons, which are the snake the, from the beginning that had tempted Adam and Eve in paradise and is continuing to tempt us. So that's why we have to focus on the cross and we, will, we are going to be saved. So let each one accept the cross in our life and focus on it and lift it up and carry it through our entire life. And with this, we will see the glorious day of our salvation. Amen. God bless you all.